deadline. Can they acquire that version of him for the last 30 games of the no. season in the postseason? No, I don't know. I don't know. That, to me, fuels this idea. Hey, did you say you want me to reset? Yeah, yeah, if you wouldn't mind. Uh, how, how much time on this break? Well, we've, we've got, got four minutes. Okay. Stay healthy. And as long as that Thank you. is around, they're going to be a very big... We're on call 24 7, 365 days a year. And our green clearance service is just 80 bucks. So nice, I said it twice. Kettle air conditioning and plumbing. GOETTL.com. We do things the right way, not the easy way. Dave here with Liberty GMC General Manager Chris Scott. Chris, got trucks? Hey Dave, do we ever. Our largest inventory in three years. Save up to $1,500 on the all-new 2023 GMC Sierra HD. Or enjoy 4.89% for 72 months. I'll pay you $1,000 more than any other GMC dealer for your trade. Or give you $1,000 cash on the spot. Nowhere can you buy or lease a new GMC for less than no payments until May. See my friend Chris Scott or shop and buy online all the time at LibertyGMCAC.com. GMC, we are professional great. <laughs> Brought to you by Canvas Annuity Score up to 5.7% on your retirement savings. And uh, we are pleased right now to be joined by the head coach of the Arizona State Football Club, the Kenny Dillingham's here. Kenny, okay, so you got, you got Wolf here, went to West Virginia. I went to ASU. We're both very invested in this, though. And um, I guess we'll just start here, man. How, how has it been going for you a couple months now on the job? It's been awesome. I mean, it's just getting back home, getting back in the local high schools, Bringing kids from all across the countries here 
to see what the Valley has to offer. I think that's what separates us. That's what separates ASU is we live in this, the fifth largest, met fifth largest metropolitan area in the country, right? And there was a time where that stadium was absolutely sold out and rocking, and I used to be in it. And if we can combine those two of this gigantic city we have now with that same culture and vibe and passion of what that used to be, it can be something special. Okay, that culture and vibe and passion right there, you were talking about activate the valley, Kenny. How's that going so far? I think it's going as good as it can. I think we'll find out when we start uh, the spring game. I mean, we're running, we're having the spring game on the same day as Pat's run. Uh, obviously, everybody knows Pat Tillman is a legend uh, for what he did, not only for the school, but for the country, but for just motivating people in general into doing what's right. So capitalizing and, and parlaying our spring game off of that and then seeing how many people we can get engaged. Because the difference between college football and professional sports is the community around college football is if I have a 9-year-old, an 8-year-old, a 7-year-old, and I can get around and get engaged in all the athletics at Arizona State, for me it's football, and I can say, see, you, little Johnny, James, Jamal, you can be number 8 there. You can be DJ Foster. He was from right over here. He went right here, yeah. and look at how successful he is now. That's what's different with college athletics is the role models and the culture that's created around the Valley is real, and that's what we need to bring back. We're talking to ASU football coach Kenny Dillingham. Kenny, um, I know you've had your, your finger on the pulse of, of this program really uh, since, since you were a kid, but even you know when you were at Oregon last year, when you, when you get here this year, were you surprised at all? You, know, you talk about activating the Valley how much it had kind of become deactivated over the last year or so. Because I mean, I've told Wolf this on a number of occasions, going to games last year, there were fans there, but it was almost just like a, a fun place to be, but the game didn't have that sort of intense focus from the fans that it has had in the past. Yeah, no question. I definitely felt like the program is, you know, at one point was definitely, you know, not as exciting or people didn't want to be as involved. And I think that's a big reason I'm here is to get people back engaged and get people passionate about something that, like I said, was once the show in town. It was the show. I was here when it was the show in town. I ran around the parking lots. I caught balls and Dodge trucks. <laughs> like, I was there. And I think that's the goal and that's the vision is can we create that college environment here because it is a different environment. And then guess what? The next day, turn around, take your butt to a uh, – a uh, Cardinals game because, you know, my family was the tailgater of the year for the Arizona Cardinals <laughs> for multiple years. So but I know you can do both because I lived it. Well, of course, you know the Valley is a basin. I'm just, don't get me started oh, on that. Okay, please, exactly. Yeah. I, I don't want to talk about that. But, you know, you talk to some professors over at ASU. Nobody's they saying activate you. the basin. They will tell you Nobody's it's a basin. That. Okay. Not All right, now, Kenny, schematically, of course, um, talk to me about your brand of football. What is it you envision for ASU? We are going to play hard. I think if you schematically, the schematics are such a small piece of this deal. We are going to play hard. We're going to put athletes in space. Uh, and it's that simple. I think the game is about, do you play harder than your opponent? Do you understand the game? Do you have a plan before you take the snap? Are you more physical than your opponent? And do you win one-on-ones? And I think that's our entire message of what we're going to be is we'll play hard. We'll play physical, right? And you're going to have to be put in positions to win your one-on-ones. It's our job to put you in the best position to win a one-on-one. -on -one. It's our job to take Elijah Badger and put him as the number three receiver to run an option route off the Mike linebacker because the corner didn't chase him in man. We just created the best one-on-one -on -one we could have. That's what this system is. It's a system built for playmakers. It's a system built to put athletes in space. Are you going to put guys in a three-point stance and demand that they be physical? Hundred percent. Are you going to do that? We will Come line off up. the ball with a dark heart and a painted face. We will line up in thirty-two personnel and we will <laughs> run G lead like the nineteen sixty Pittsburgh Steelers did. Oh, when we're on the red zone. <laughs> We, and if we get to the two-yard line, you best believe quarterback sneak is being run from under center, and that's what we're going to do because at the end of the game, the goal is to move people. And if you don't move people, you have no chance. Man, I love that. This Kenny. is refreshing. Speaking my language. No, no shotgun from fourth and inches on the goal line. 
That is correct. Uh, Kenny Dillingham is joining us. Kenny, I thought you said a couple interesting things, uh, really interesting things last week. One of them was you're going to put guys in position to fail or they're going to be uncomfortable, but also you can put them in positions where they are comfortable and just kind of get the most out of them that way. Can you kind of expand on that? So a great example would be teaching, I'll just start with the quarterback, but maybe teaching a quarterback what problems are in a play. So, hey, we give you this play, but if this safety rolls down in the box, this is a problem, right? And not necessarily teaching him all of the solutions to the problem yet. Maybe only teaching him one solution to the problem and then putting him out in the practice field and him getting out there and being, oh, crap, like, this isn't good. I'm uncomfortable right now. Like, this isn't a good play. I, I have a hot built into this four vertical concepts, but it's an angle route from the back, and I, he's not going to get his eyes around. Problem. And then going in the film room and saying, all right, you show me solutions. What are solutions in the system that we have to this problem that you could check to, that you could change to? So really putting these guys in really uncomfortable positions because you're going to take the snap on game day sometimes and be uncomfortable. Is that uncomfortable play a pick six? Is it second and 20 now? Or is it second and 10? And you've got to train people to be productive when you're uncomfortable and to not make a bad play horrible. And then train them. Right to be super comfortable, so then the next day come out and give them the same look, but now you gave them all the tools. Oh, now they're taking a deep breath. Now they're like, oh yeah, I'm good. I know what's about to happen, and now they're comfortable. What did Oregon teach you the most being there? Your time there. What did you learn from Oregon in the talks? Uh, I would say practicing for a defensive-minded head coach was definitely different, so we had to do some things throughout periods that were, I felt at times, maybe, why, why are we doing this on offense? This doesn't help us. But at the end of the day, it did help us come game planning and it, it forcing us to do some things formationally that I'm like, I'm never going to call this call. Why are we practicing this? And then, you know, week six, I'm like, whoa. I may want to call this in this game plan. <laughs> I'm like, hey, guys, remember back in June? Right, so I think the comfort zone of, Structuring practice defensively, I really got to learn and grow from how can we do it together. Interesting. We've been talking about this on the show, and I'm sure other people have as well, but you know, with everything going on with how much college football is changing right now, you really seem to fit the mold of being the right guy at the right time because you have that old school mentality, but you also are open to navigating the NILs and the transfer portal and knowing that. How much do you think having that, that mix in you, how much does that help you stepping in here right now? Yeah, I definitely think that in this profession, I, I, college football is like technology, which means the rules change and how you play the game changes on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. And if you're not key, just like technology changes, if you're still Googling MapQuest, you're probably a little <laughs> bit behind. But, you know, at one time that was cutting edge. So if you're not constantly changing with the rules, constantly changing to how college football is played, how it's marketed, Right, then you're falling behind. Well, the Kenny Dillingham coach team have a fullback. That's what I would like no, to ask. Oh, we definitely will have a fullback. No, seriously, Kenny? Seriously. We're going to have a fullback. When would you use a fullback, Kenny, from time to time? So, fourth and one, <laughs> third and one, third and two. But the caveat to that is we'll always have a package. And I'm a firm believer that if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And there'd be times last year, and even dating back to when I was the OC in Memphis, that we'd line up in 32 personnel on third and two. We'd get we'd get it on G lead, which is everybody blocked down. Front side guard goes and kicks the edge. Fullback ISOs up for the mic of the safety. And if it works, we're going to run it again. First and ten. If it works, we're going to run it again. How about power? We're going to run power. We, I, I haven't run as much power. I've run more. You know, duo, no pull power. Oh, oh more, more I, than I, there power. we go. Yeah, oh, the yeah. power without the pull. Exactly. 22, right. 23 double. That's right. Or duo. Or, Some, yeah. Exactly right. Well, That's Bruce true. Arians was big on Will's going to show up as a walk on. Well, uh, well, he's lost enough weight. Yeah. We'll take him. <laughs> Why do you think he lost the weight? <laughs> walk on. All right, uh, we come back. Uh, ASU head football coach Kenny Dillingham's going to stick around. We'll get deeper into what the Sun Devils are all about this season. It's Wolf and Luke on Arizona Sports, the local sports leader. Look, you're clear. Juan Grass is back with a $20 million purse. The WM Phoenix Open at TPC Scottsdale. Follow the People's Open leaderboard on Arizona Sports with coverage presented by Camelback Medical.
Luke Wapensky back to tell you about Twin Peaks. Phoenix is about to become the center of the sports universe with the big game coming to town. Twin Peaks is the place to be for all of it. Plus, the Phoenix Open is obviously here this week as well. And there's a Twin Peaks right across the street from the course in Scottsdale. And don't miss the scenery, great atmosphere inside, or the outstanding food selection like the wings, boneless, smoked, or grilled, bone-in, obviously, as well. So many different sauces to choose from. Bourbon teriyaki, Nashville hot, spicy Thai chili. You can just go classic. There's many more as well. And when you're there, check out some Champions League soccer too. Twin Peaks has you covered for game day to kick off the round of 16 with 29 degree draft beer and scratch food at your soccer headquarters as well. Plus, nobody does happy hour like Twin Peaks. Three to six tend to close every weeknight. Whatever your preference, they have everything from local craft beers to handcrafted cocktails, rounding out an adventurous drink menu that is second to none. Don't forget about those 29-degree man-sized drafts as well. Whatever you're looking for, Twin Peaks has you covered with five convenient Valley locations. So stop by and experience the lodge mentality at Twin Peaks. You're clear. Of course, I use Mr. Clean and Magic to raise the top. That's not my stove top and bath top. But then I discovered I could also use it to use the Clean Club manual. Deadline is looming, and according to reports, the Phoenix Suns offered a large trade package to the Brooklyn Nets that included Chris Paul for guard Kyrie Irving. But now that with Kyrie going to the Mavericks, TNT's Chris Haynes is reporting that the Suns are prepared to pursue star forward Kevin Durant if he becomes available. 
sure to keep it right here for the latest running the Suns in Thursday's deadline. The Arizona Cardinals have narrowed their head coach search to three candidates after eliminating three more. The finalists for the job are now Steelers senior assistant Brian Flores, Giants offensive coordinator Mike Kafka, and Bengals defensive coordinator Lou Anaroma. In addition, NFL Network's Ian Rappaport is reporting that Flores will undergo a second interview with the Cards on Wednesday. And the Arizona Coyotes are back from the All-Star break tonight. They're hosting the Wild at Mullen Arena at 7 o'clock. You can hear the game on the Arizona Sports app and on 98.7. The latest is brought to you by Coca-Cola. Join Arizona Sports Thursday from 2 to 6 at Albertsons on 83rd Avenue in Camelback. Grab for Coca-Cola and chicken wings and scan the QR code to win big items with game time rewards. Arizona Sports, the local sports leader. It's Super Bowl week. It's Super Bowl week. Wolf and Luke, live from the Phoenix Convention Center at Media Row. Hour number two of the show. Live from Media Row, Media Row coverage is brought to you by Canvas Annuity. Score up to 5.7% on your retirement savings. It is Wolf and Luke, and we are pleased to still be uh, joined by ASU football head coach Kenny Dillingham here out at Media Row. Uh, Kenny, you said a lot of interesting stuff last week in particular, and one of the things you said, and you've been consistent with this, I think you even said it the, the first time we talked to you, is you don't want to make promises to, to guys you're recruiting because that sort of sets you up. I mean, just, just, you can only predict so much. So I think the way you said it is it was almost unfair to everybody to make promises to guys. Can you expand on that a little bit? Yeah, there's no question. When I look at it like this, if I promise a high school kid or a transfer that he's going to play or that this is going to happen, well, either he's going to show up with a mindset of I've already made it, which makes him complacent, which actually isn't going to help him be the best player he can be by human nature. Human nature, once you've made it, naturally, 99% of the world just isn't quite as motivated. So if I promise you you're going to play and you show up, I'm by default hurting your growth. If I promise you you're going to play or promise all the things and you show up and they don't happen, well, now I lied to you. How are you going to get coached by somebody who lied to you? So in reality, if I promise you something, if I guarantee you something, there is no good outcome. I'm either hurting your growth because now I've made you complacent, right? Or I'm hurting your growth because now you have a coach you can't trust. I would much rather be the guy that says this is going to be the hardest thing you've ever done in your entire life if you show up here. I'm going to hold you more accountable than any person's ever held you in your entire life. But if you do it the right way, we're going to have a crap ton of fun because that's who I am as a person. Kenny, did that extend to Jake Rashad? 100%. 100%. 100%. He did that up front. He had no guarantees coming to him. Zero guarantees. I, I've told him from the first time I talked to him, right, my job is to make you the best version of yourself on the field, off the field, in life. I want to help you succeed. I'm going to do everything I can to help you succeed, but I can't guarantee you anything. I can just guarantee you I'm going to give everything I have to help you. That's a refreshing perspective that you don't hear very often. Is that Where did that come from? Is that just your experience in the game? Is that from somebody that you knew growing up or somebody you played for or coached with? That's just what I believe is right. In this big, in this big profession of college football, this billion-dollar industry, you have 17-, 16-year-old kids who are caught in this big web of professional people telling them what they want to hear, getting in their mind, planting seeds, the media telling them what schools they're allowed to go to, what schools they're not allowed to go to, what is acceptable, what they can't do. And you, this 17-year-old just gets overwhelmed and overwhelmed overwhelmed, and they don't actually do what they want to do. They do what everybody else tells them to do, and it's sad. So for me, it's no. This is what we're going to be here. We're going to be about doing it the right way and telling you the truth. Can you give us a scouting report on Jade Rashad? Yeah, I mean, big athletic kid, super, super strong arm, if not the strongest arm in the class, top two, top three, strongest arm in the entire class, can make off platform throws, uh, can get the ball out quick when needed in the RPO world, has the ability to shorten his release uh, if needed. Uh, Got to get a little bit bigger, got to get in the weight room like most uh, kids in, that are coming out of high school. They got to get in the weight room, get a little bigger. But this is a kid that has all the tools necessary to be an elite player. Can you comp him to anybody? Does he comp to anybody that we would know? Uh, I don't want to give a comp. I can just say big, athletic, elite arm strength. Do you remember Randall Cunningham? Uh, I, I do remember Randall Cunningham. Uh, oh, hey, for you, 
Super strong arm. I mean, this dude can throw the football 65, 70 yards as a 17-year-old. I went and saw him at a practice, what was this, a year ago now, and high school hashes are wider than college hashes, and they're wider than NFL hashes. And this dude threw out, go to the field on a rope, right, on a whole shot rope, 18 to 22 yards down the field across the entire field. And that is a harder throw that even NFL guys have to make because you're never on that part of the hash. And I said, I call her head coach, and I said, this dude is different. Please <laughs> <laughs> or me. <laughs> Talking to ASU football head coach Kenny Dillingham. Uh, Kenny, you mentioned Elijah Badger earlier. When you talked to some of the guys that were here last year, what, what do they say about how, how much things have changed in the last month or two? To be honest, I don't really ask much about the past. It's about moving forward. You know, I think when you compare, I think people who always compare to what it was, what it was, it means you're insecure about what you're doing. I have great confidence in the plan and the staff and what we're doing moving forward to get to where we want to go. So we're not really worried about the past much. We're worried about where we're headed. Where's football headed? Where's football going, Kenny? What do you, you know, the football universe, to me, once again, four years ago, it seemed to be swinging over to the new age. New age offense. Now it seems to, the pendulum seems to be coming back to the middle. Would you agree with that? 100% agree. I think football's always changing. It's like I said it before, it's like technology. So I'll put this in a bubble. College football, you don't have as many quarterbacks that are elite, right? So how do you get your, your number back? is you usually have to more have a more mobile guy that can get a plus one in the run game, triple option. So teams start to do what? The zone read. Well, in order to stop the zone read, you have to play a two-eye safety shell, essentially, to, to get to cover zero fits so the extra hack can get it down. Well, the issue with that is now you can't stop the RPO world. So then the game evolved to the RPO. Right. Well, then the RPO took over. So how do you stop the RPO? You have to spin back to one high. So every route is being matched by a man. So the game went from a one-high league, one-high, you know, football, to two-high football to stop the zone read in college, in which the quarterback that just runs and scrambles all the time in terms of the zone read is dying. So you're getting back to prototypical one-high. And an RPO is just old-school pop pass, just fancy ways to call it, right? Don't let people fool you. Oh, it's an RPO, cutting edge. No, it's old-school play action, pop pass, except all linemen don't go downfield, right? I'm actually away from the RPO a little to get to where you're saying. We're going to dictate on offense. If we want to run the gosh dang ball, we're going to run it. Kenny. If we want to throw the ball, we're going to throw it. We're not going to let the just, chance tell us. I was just going to ask you that. That's the first time that I can think of where an RPO, which was diabolical to me. When you think of the RPO, okay, we're going to go ahead. <laughs> we don't know what we're going to do with this ball. We're going to ride this guy. We're going to look at one guy that went side inside. We're going to want to slap behind him. And, you know, I'm thinking how diabolical that play action is. Yet at the same time, you're letting the defense actually dictate what you do with the ball. That is diametrically opposed to an old school, old world fullback where we were going to run this play and try to dictate to you. Interesting. No question. Yeah, we want to be, we want to make the decision on what happens. Now, are there going to be times that we run the RPO? Yes, there's a time and a place for yes. it. Yes. But if you can't say it's second and 10 and you're on the 50 yard line and we got three downs because we're going to go for it on fourth or three or less, hey, run the ball three times in a row. I don't want to throw it. Then you've got a problem. And yeah. we need to be able to dictate what's happening. Kenny, I got about 50 more questions for you, but I know you're busy, man. We appreciate the time. Good luck this year, all right? Thank you. I appreciate it. Kenny, right. thank you so much, buddy. That's, uh, that's ASU football head coach Kenny Dillingham joining us out here. What are the, we come back, the best matchups when it comes to Super Bowl 57? We're going to ask 15 year NFL vet Lorenzo Alexander in the lowdown. He'll join us next. It's Wolf Luke on Arizona Sports 97.5.